Uh, I was going to tell you about my near-death experience when I was three. Okay. Um, when I was three years old, I was very sick. Um, I had asthma, which means I couldn't breathe well. And it was always hard when I breathed because um, I was noisy because it kind of was wheezy sounding. And it was always hard because I couldn't get enough air. I always felt like I couldn't breathe enough to get enough air. So one, one night I was um, in bed sleeping and uh, I was breathing and it was really hard and then I remembered that I got out of my body. I breathed in and then I couldn't get enough air and then I floated out. And I was like up near the ceiling looking down on my body. And as I looked down on it, it looked really small to me. It was a small box. And then um, I turned around and like on the wall there was this big hole. It was a, a, a black hole. And so I, I put my head in and I went inside of it. And, and it was like a cylinder. And, and it had little rectangular glass pieces like it were glued along the side and it went around like this. Just like this. Around. And as I and as I went by I put my hand out to touch it, to touch the pieces of uh, rectangular glass. And each one had a color, pink and purple and blue and red. All different colors. But pretty soon I could feel my body moving faster. And pretty soon the light began to pull so that the light looked very long, like long streams. Mm -hmm. And I was floating through the through the light down to the end of the tunnel. I could see the end. It was a very it looked like this really tiny way at the end. So I got to the end and then I climbed out of it. And I was standing someplace. And it looked kind of kind of blue, kind of mm -hmm. foggy, foggy blue. And then all of a sudden, I found myself standing on some steps to this huge castle. It was gigantic. It was the biggest castle I've ever seen in my life. And it was made of clear crystal. It looked like glass. And it kind of, it kind of hummed. And it had all kinds of colors in it. You know, I have like a version of something that crystal color look like. I bet you do. Okay, come and show you it. Okay, after we're done, we'll do that. Can we do that? So I stood on the on the steps, and it was the building looked like it was the tallest building I've ever seen. It looked bigger than trees. It was real tall, and I felt I was this big. I did. And there was this man that was standing on the steps. And he was wearing sandals and a white kind of like a dress looking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he had a rope, white rope, oh, and a white dress, long white dress, all the way to the floor. And he bent over and he asked me if I had come to see him. And I said, yeah, I had come to see him. So he asked me then if I had a gift, and I said, no, I forgot it. I left and forgot my gift. So we had to go in the garden and get a gift. Now, I saw the garden with the flowers. Mm -hmm. My flowers, when I saw them, sang. This flower would, would sing, sing a higher note, but if the flowers were dark, like dark, dark purple, it would sing a low note. And they danced. They moved. Like this. And they sang, and they had faces. Well, My flowers had how faces. How did you know that you did come to that? How did I know? Yeah, or maybe blind. Oh, oh, no. No, I had definitely come to see a certain kind of person. I didn't know the person's name, but I knew the person was important. But I didn't know the person's name. There was no name. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I didn't pick the flowers because I would feel like they, the flowers would be crying if I heard them and took them out of the earth. But I found a little mouse. And we found a box with the mouse in. Only the mouse kept jumping up out of the box because he was too big for the box. So he kept popping up and I kept pushing him down. He kept popping up and I kept pushing him down. And finally, finally the box was half open because he was too big for the box and I didn't want to scare him. 
And besides that, I was worried about if you could breathe or not. It's hard to breathe in boxes, you know. That's what I thought. So we get the, the box and the mouse, and this man with the white dress and the sandals is walking along with me. And, and I keep thinking, I've got to see him. I have to see him right away. And all of a sudden, we're in this long hallway with a bunch of doors, very tall doors. They're wood, like this kind of wood, but they're darker. And they open from the middle like this, the, the big door. And he opens them. And when he opens the doors, it like echoes, you know, echo? <laughs> like an echo sound, a big echo. And he must have done it like 11 or 12 times. And on the last door at the bottom, there was this gold light. You could see it coming from under the door. Mm -hmm. And he opened it, and there was this beautiful gold light that came out of the doorway. It wasn't hot, but it was you couldn't see anything. It was just so strong, but it wasn't hot. And and I couldn't see my, my the person who helped me, you know, find the mouse. He was gone. Yeah. He was gone. I don't know where he went, but he went away. And then all of a sudden I was standing in this very, very large room. And it was made of, of like rock. Mm -hmm. And in the middle of the big room was this, like this chair. It was a wood chair. It had all kinds of car people. And there's a young man who sat in it. And um, he was wearing white. And he had like a red, uh, like a shawl kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And he, he said to come here, like this. So I sat on his lap, and I showed him the mouse, and he was very happy to get the mouse. And we talked to the mouse a little bit. And then I told him that I wanted to go home, that I wanted to come home now and stay. That was my home. Where I had been, that was my home, in, in the castle. I had been in the castle, and I wanted to come back to the castle. Mm -hmm. But he said that I wasn't... Uh, I wasn't done here. I had to go back. Mm -hmm. I must go back to my body. My body really was not in the castle. My body was back on the bed. Mm -hmm. But but I wanted to stay in the castle. He said, no, I had to go back to my body. It wasn't time for me to be with, with him in the castle. Mm -hmm. When I sat on, on his lap, um, and I said that I wanted to go home, and he said to me, it's not, uh, it's not your time yet. I said, well, but I want to come home. I don't like it down there. They are mean and they are cruel. I don't like them. I want to come home. Now. And he said to me, I grieve for what they have done to you and I grieve for what they do to each other. But you must go back because you promised me you would do it this time. Could I do it another time? No. You must do it this time because you promised me. So I said that I wanted to stay there a little while. And he said, okay. And he, sh he, um, he said to me he wanted me to meet his mother. His mother wore, wore white also, but she had blue soft mood. She was also very tall. These are very tall people. They looked to me about seven feet. They were tall. And um, she was very nice. She had very pretty eyes. And um, all of uh, the, the mother, his mother that I met in him, they all had gold around their, their bodies. It was this gold light that came off of it. Everything was gold light. The colors that come off. Yeah. The flowers had them, too. The flowers had lights around them. Because we went back in the garden, his mother and I. And we stayed there a long time. Until it was time for me to go back. And visit. So then, um, after, after a time, it seemed like a long time, after I was in the garden, then I went back to that same room. And he was no longer there. But the... Uh, Two other people came to help, help me through the doorway. There was like that, a doorway in the room. And that was where I went back through the tunnel and back into my body. Mm -hmm. Well, I know I said it, it wasn't your time to be there. But you need to live a little longer. 
They don't want to lose their legs too short. Well, that's true. See, and and there's a time when you can leave, and there's a time you can't leave. Talk about it. Pardon? Talk about it. Yeah. How old are you now, Cindy? Uh, 46. You're 46? You know, Cindy, I noticed you don't wear a watch. No. I was just wondering why not. Because uh, watches don't work with me. Why, why? What do you mean they don't work they, with you? They just don't. They break. They they don't keep time right. There's always, the, there's always a problem with the watches. I've gone through a lot of watches. Mm-hmm. And they just don't work. You know, they lose time, they gain time. They're never the right time, so I give up on the time. <laughs> Is just, that right? I don't, yeah, I don't keep watches on them. I don't like them because they, they just... I spent more, They spent more time in the shop than they did on my hands, so I just don't really wear them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah. And, and, do you, and you have dreams that come true, is that correct? Mm-hmm. What, what kind of dreams do you have that come true? Like, um... Oh, the first time when I was, um, I knew someone was going to die, I met when I was in junior high school. I well, didn't have... What was that like? It was really different. Um, it was like, um... You're a psychic. Yeah. Maybe, maybe Chris can understand this. It was the first time that I ever could hear a wall cry. A wall cry. I, the school that I was at, it was a junior high school, had walls that a brick like this, okay? And they were, they weren't as many colors, but it was that red kind of brick stuff, okay? And the whole school was made of that. And when I, about a week before this boy died, um, there was, um, I could hear the walls crying. I could hear a low, moaning, crying sound that came off the walls. That's the best way I can describe it. And and I would ask my friends, um, can't you hear the walls crying? This, they're sad. The walls are crying for a reason. Can you hear them? And nobody could hear them. And um, and there was a sadness that hung in the air that I could feel. And it happened about a week before. And on the day that I, I met this, this young man, um, he was a ninth grader. What grade were you in? I was in the ninth grade. He was an eighth grader. I was in the ninth grade. And um, he came over and he was talking. We weren't real close friends, but I, uh, he was a friend to other people I knew, and so we were just talking. And he was going to go away on a... Uh, go up in the mountains and do hiking, explore, cave exploring. That was it. And... and that was yeah. Caves, you go up and explore caves and walk around and do hiking and all that stuff. And um, and when he told me that, I got a real cold feeling. And the, I remember the hair on my neck stood up and back. That's not a good sign when that happened to me. And I felt real uncomfortable and I felt sad. And I begged him not to go. Don't go. I said, don't go. You'll, you'll be sorry if you go. Don't go. And he just laughed. And he said, oh, everything will be fine. He says, I know what I'm doing. I've done lots of cave exploring. There's nothing wrong with that. That's fun. Where did you live at this time? San Diego, California. Mm. Mm -hmm. And so then what happened is that um, the following Monday, the whole school was crying. He died in a, in a cave in. It was a real freak thing. It was just like one of those things that nobody would expect because it was not a cave that was bad, you know, uh, sealed off or anything. It was uh, everybody had been through it, but just something happened and he was killed. He was buried in the cave, and the whole school cried. It cried for weeks. Well, the teachers found a good burial place. That's correct. He, he did. He really did find a good burial place. But it was it was then the whole school was crying. Then you could hear it. You could hear the tears. You could hear it. You could see it. It was it was like the walls finally stopped crying, but the people were crying. And that was my... Oh, the walls of the sickness. And yeah, the yeah, and then the people were crying. That's right. So that's what happened. Hmm. You know, um, and that was my, I guess, my first experience that I really remember after visiting uh, where I did when I was three in the castle. I didn't have not a whole lot of activity 